our website, and then our email address is right below there. It's city hall at cityofportorchard.us. That's how you get messages to the council um, and messages to me or anybody else in city hall. You, you start there, and then uh, there's, there's a place to check council or somebody on there mm -hmm. so that, you know. But whatever you do, if you, write a, if you write a message to them, it'll get to them if you go through there. So, and uh, the last meeting, I was, I was saying that some of the stuff I'd love to be able to help with, but it's more on the level of the council. And I am sure they would love to hear from you. And so an email is one good way to do it. Uh, they haven't chosen, and I don't think they've chosen to publish, uh, publish their private phone numbers. Uh, so we have to go with the email. That's the best we have right now. So uh, would you all join and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance? I'd love to do that at the beginning of every public meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for the liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Hi, I don't notice, I mean, I don't recognize everybody from, uh, you know, the same faces, so that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, in the back, there's a, uh, uh, well, I don't, oh, yeah. There's a synopsis of what the last town hall meeting uh, contained, what it was about. Um, on our two television screens, these are the topics that the folks at the last meeting wanted to discuss in a little more you know, depth. So we've got those up there. I would like to kind of go through my notes for you to try to answer uh, the, the folks that were at the first town hall meeting. I'll go try to do it really quickly. Uh, the, there was quite a few comments that said stop annexing everything. Another comment was stop annexing, period. And I think there was two others. So uh, I just want to let you know we, we, we did a technical annexation uh, at the last council meeting on Tuesday. And the reason I say it was technical, we already own the four parcels of property. They, they belong to the city of Port Orchard. And they're technically ours, or they're, they're realistically ours, and they'll never be developed in any way, way or form except to maybe be a stormwater management pond or part, uh, maybe a well site or something to do with that. So, so the annexation of those four parcels was just kind of a t to correct the record and to correct the map. So that's what we have right now. Is, uh, that was the last annexation that we just, the council just voted on. So uh, I don't think that goes into the or leads into that stop annexing everything and stop annexing period. I don't think that uh, that was, should be included in that comment or I mean, you know, against that comment. So uh, there was some concerns about development of uh, McCormick Woods Park. Uh, in my budget, uh, the mayor's budget, which is the first step in the process, budget process, I have include, included $250,000 of their fund uh, which was passed to, through us from, or down to us from Kitsap County when they were annexed, uh, that can only be used for McCormick Woods. So it's not like, uh, I think that comment was, uh, you're, you're taking money out of the other parks' mouths, but it's not the case. That park money has to be used for the McCormick Woods project and the, the park. So uh, it's in my budget. Uh, it's not all of the money that's in there, but it's a, it's a portion and uh, we can talk about it later if you want. Uh, I think on this, uh, I think on the mayor's budget, we talk a little bit about it. So well, let's, let's move on really quickly here. Um, the website, uh, there was several comments that said you need to improve the website. We are working on improving the website. Uh, once again, go to uh, cityofportorchard.us and check the website out. It, it's improving every month or every week, actually. Uh, we're doing it when we can afford to do it. When we, and the reason I say that is it's not costing us money up front, but our staff is doing it when they have the time to do it. When they can take a little bit of extra time to work on it, that's when it gets done. But I believe there's been already some big improvements in it. And the only way that you know that is maybe once or twice a month you go to the website and you'll say, hey, that's something new. That, that works better, you know. So uh, 
uh, I encourage you to look at our website. That's one of the ways, uh, and then and that's a segue. Uh, we have sign-up sheets back there, and I'll pass this around. If you want information from the city of Port Orchard, give us your web address, or I mean your uh, email address, and we will automatically start sending you road uh, closures. Uh, when it gets snowy, we'll tell you when the roads are being sanded. We'll, anything and everything that we send out will go to you. So if you'd like that, I like that idea because uh, I know where the delete button is, and I know you guys do too. So I just just get on our list. If you don't, if if there's too much, or if you're not interested in that, just delete it. You know. But it's a really convenient way for us to get the messages out to you in real time, or at least in real time when we have a chance to put them on the computer. And we're actually getting pretty good at, at getting that information out on the computer. So if you'd like, uh, you could sign up here. I'll bring that over to you, or there's one on the back. Uh, the goodie table back there. Um, there were several comments uh, about people not liking the idea that several of the council committees met in restaurants. I have nothing whatever to do with that. I, I'm not even going to touch that. That's like a third rail for me to touch that. That's up to the council committees um, and the council. There again, there's email through the city to the council. You can tell them how you feel. You know, I don't even think it's my place to tell them how you, you well, in some of this stuff I've written what you said. So that's about as far as I can go with that. Um, uh, the other way we're trying to reach the public is, is having our folks videotape this and put it on our website. So it will be there and it'll be available to you probably three days from now, first part of the week. and. Uh, Okay, um, people ask about downtown Port Orchard. Uh, uh, we just approved, uh, Randy, what, what was the, we just approved the final design of the uh, Port Orchard public market. And you guys have all been hearing about that. Uh, have just a couple of copies of that. If you'd like to just pass them around, it shows how it looks now. And uh, I have three copies. Now, you're, unfortunately, your mayor's a cheapskate. Color copies cost a lot of money. <laughs> they really do. And so I, I, I don't like throwing away color copies. So I don't print as many as I probably should. And, I, and I'm encouraging you, uh, if you don't make notes on everything, just leave your whatever you don't want to you know, actually have to refer to later. And I'll use it again. Yeah. This will be on the website. Everything that you hear tonight and uh, tonight's video will be on the website. Yes, we'll, we'll make sure it's on the website. We'll put this this whole packet on the website, and we're just tickled. We really are. It's uh, let's see, you've got one there, one there. Did you guys? You're good. That's a. It's moving forward. It's it's taken. Tough some time, but nothing in government. I think I told them last time, I go, wow, that's one of the things I finally realized, that nothing in government goes fast. It takes a bit of time. You know, you have to, have to make sure you know you're doing it the way you should. So, But that's a great project. Uh, other projects downtown, uh, hopefully we'll be working on this winter, will be the pedestrian walkway or pathway. The reason to, to hold up, it doesn't make any sense to work on stuff after the 15th of October, but it does if you're a fish, because there's a fish window. And if you're working anywhere close to the water, Department of Ecology will not allow you to work, and Department of Fish and Wildlife won't let you work down there until after October 15th. So there'll be a, 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 quite a bit of activity down on our waterfront, both from the port of Bremerton and from the city of Port Orchard. And in fact, you'll see, you'll go, <laughs> Well, why didn't they do that when the sun was out? It's all, all on the waterfront, and that's one of the reasons we can't do it when the sun's out. We have to wait till the, the fish window's open, and that opens on the 15th of October. So that, you'll see that. And uh, you've probably all seen this handout. It's on the back table, and it shows the major projects we're hoping to see completed in the next year to year and a half. Um, it's, uh, it, it shows the Port Orchard public market. It shows the library roof that's un almost completed now. And it shows several other projects 
So uh, uh, if you get a chance, get one of those. And, uh, and that kind of is for answering that question. Now, let's see what else. Other people said, Uh, several people said that we need a better dialogue to ensure people volunteer in, in our community. Um, I have to ask you, and I'll ask them, and I'll put it on the website. Help me, help me, because I can't ask everybody. And uh, you know, it, it is in fact the subject of my newsletter, which segues into that. It's in the back on this little pouch there, and all this newsletter is about those very people that volunteer for every sort of thing in in the city of Port Orchard and from the Eagles, the Chamber of Commerce, Fathoms of Fun folks, Port Orchard Bay Street Association. It gives you an idea of who they are and what they do. And if one of those items in there sounds good to you, I'll hook you up with whoever that's run, is the director, manager, president, whatever, of that organization. And uh, they'd be glad to hear from you. So uh, I'll keep doing that. I'll, you know, that's, that's my contribution is to say, Oh, I know where you can volunteer if you want to volunteer your services. Because no matter what services you're volunteering, there's one of those groups can use you. So uh, that's about it for the town hall meeting summary that I uh, that we just had uh, last month. So, and in, in true uh, the, the way I believe, this isn't about me telling you so much about things. It's uh, uh, I want to hear from you. So. Uh, I thought that because these were the items that were, were topics uh, from the last one that people wanted to talk more about or wanted me to talk more about, I thought we'd start by uh, comments on those items. And uh, if you don't want to go there and you have the mic, you can go wherever you want to go. You don't have to tell me your name. You don't have to tell me where you live. If you live in South Kitsap, if you live in Kitsap County, I don't even care if you're in, from Tacoma. You might have a good idea that we can use. And uh, uh, that's fine, you know. Wherever you're from, I want to hear from you. Now, if you want to say your name, or if you want to get some information, or you want to give us a phone number to call you back, I'd be glad to do that also. There's Manila quarter page cards out there that have questions if you don't want to ask them publicly. In fact, I'll get a few of those. And if you don't want to ask them publicly, uh, write them down. Pretty good way of doing it is just write down your question and some kind of contact information on these, these manila cards, and I'll get back to you, or somebody will get back to you. And at least try to answer the question. So, okay. Uh, really, I want to thank you all for being here. I, I was afraid nobody would be here because everybody would be watching the uh, vice president debate. And, uh, but I guess you all know what I know, that you can always go on YouTube and find and look at it tomorrow morning. <laughs> so, we so. Oh, you're going to record it. Okay. Well, either way, we could always, uh, you know, but anyway, thank you for being here. If you want to leave in time for the debate, that's understandable. So if you'd like to make a comment and then leave, that's understandable too. So, you know, we're just here to hear the comments and, uh, and go from there. So uh, do you guys have any comments or questions or statements about public safety in the city of Port Orchard? OK. I'm going to hand you the mic because we're recording. On the corner of uh, Rockwell and Bay Street, right at that intersection, it's difficult enough to make a right-hand turn onto Bay coming down Rockwell but it's impossible to make a left-hand turn on Bay Street. I, I think they should have either some bumps there for speed. They fly through there, and I believe the speed limit is 25. Nobody goes 25. We happen to live right in those condos right on that corner, okay. so we're very familiar with the corner. <laughs> and uh, right in front of where the, rest, the Chinese restaurant is, mm -hmm. if you think about that there's like a rock retaining wall that sticks out and you cannot see cars coming from downtown Port Orchard until they are on you. I'm agreeing <laughs> with you. I, I'm agreeing with you. I've been down there and I just when you think there's an opening, there's it closes. And you know there's there's nearly not a lot of sight distance. I mean I'm surprised there hasn't been something horrendous happening there. 
and, and even the, the crosswalk for the people. I wouldn't cross there in the crosswalk if you paid me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, they're like. <laughs> then, you know, just as a side from that, but what does everybody think about the flag system that Port Orchard is instigating? We have flags there. Yeah, but I mean, do you like the flag oh, idea? Oh, yeah, but you know what? I noticed so many people do not take the time to pick up one of those flags. Yeah. All right. I, can, I can't believe it. <laughs> well, they're the, they're the devil or the, uh, the the chance takers. They're the ones going, Right. I know I can get through there. I know I can. I'm not going to tell anybody I'm trying either. That was a great idea. <laughs> well, um, Brandy's here, and, and what do we do with that? Talk to the police. Uh, talk to Mark, who is our engineer. I believe any changes regarding the street would probably start with public property. Public property committee. And uh, that's chaired by, uh, let's see, that's chaired by uh, uh, Carolyn Powers. You know, those, so, little, those little round discs that they actually sink into the roads, it's not a bad bump. It's not like a speed bump. But a lot of places have those in different cities. Uh, they're like a double row. And it slows people down. It, it doesn't really bounce your car around or... Mm -hmm. You know, like like a speed bump. Mm -hmm. They look like a little a little silver cap. Mm -hmm. They only kind stand like up about an uh -huh. inch and three quarters or two. They're usually inches. yellow, yeah. so they do that too. Mm -hmm. So okay. an, another issue with Bay Street, it's also a state highway. So whatever we do, we have to coordinate right. with the state. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a, another group that would love to have a crosswalk, and we're. We've been told probably not going to happen because it's a state highway, but I don't think we're going to give up completely. Yet. We're still going to be working with the state on that one. And that's another issue. But um, so, yeah, maybe we need to talk to some of these folks. Uh, if you would like to talk to the property chair or the committee, you can email them and you can and tell them that. It would be a good idea. You know, it doesn't hurt if you, if you do it more than once to more than a few people, because you remember the old expression, a squeaky wheel gets grease. It's still the same. It has, nothing's changed. <laughs> the more they hear it, the more they'll pay attention to it. Yeah. So, uh, no answer tonight, but I'll try to get something to you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Anybody else? Back there. Uh, yes, I, I don't know if these are new or not, but I, I come to, I got three concerns I come here tonight to, to see about. Uh, the first one uh, in order of priorities is uh, from the uh, newspaper, the Port Orchard Independent, uh, dated Friday, August the 10th, 2012, on page A A28, and I'm just going to read you just a little bit of it and ask you a question. It has to do with fix the city's wells in the works. And it, it goes on to, to say that the contract's been let to fix well number nine. Mm -hmm. And it says here, uh, to, to read a little piece of it, uh, it says bids on well number nine came in at 10% above the million dollars already planned. So that's a million 100,000 for these filters. And uh, then it, you skip a few lines and stuff. It says money for the renovation comes came out of the city's reserve budget and will be refunded by a water rate hike. So I'm kind of wondering before you got to be mayor, I think last December or something in the middle of the night, I think the city council had a, a meeting and decided they would uh, appoint uh, Mr. Mrs. Capola to the planning commission, but they also raised our water bill. And is this another rate hike that you're going to do, or uh, I, you know? You want me to do them in, in the order, or you probably ought to do them one at a time. So I. So I, I well, that remember. was just that, that's well, just. It, it is one. not a new rate hike. It's going to be paid for out of the rate hike, that, the th the three phase rate hike that we've already passed, and it's going to come. That that how that's how we're going to pay for that improvement. It's not just a filter. It's a great big tank, and what it does is it'll pump water into the tank and then it, it basically settles there and then they'll re have another pump take it out of the tank and put it in the system and it's supposed to get rid of 95% of that uh, that uh, 
uh, coloration and a little bit of smell too. So, uh, and there's more to it than just that because there's several other systems that we're having to upgrade along with that. So, um, if you if you like to come down to the city hall, I'll, I'll show you the engineering plans and drawings of that. It's quite an extensive operation. I don't know if you've noticed they've got a bulldozer path going well, across the field there. Yeah, I can understand. And my only concern is not. I, I don't care about the mechanics of it so much. I just care about the pain of the bill. Okay. And so. Uh, you know, uh, can I, uh, 30, I've lived here for 37 years, and I think when I first moved here, you know, we're in a land of plenty, water is everywhere, you know, we're 60 miles as the crow flies from uh, the, the rainforest, and so we should have the best water in the world. There, there's no d reason for us not, but for some reason, Port Orchard seems to have a lot of trouble with water. I don't get it. Uh, okay. okay, but anyhow, uh, second yeah, uh, my second concern was uh, you already touched on it, I guess, uh, the other one there. I, the, the Port Orchard Independent dated April 6, 2012, has you on the front page, and it says going forward is uh, the topic. So it says uh, one of your campaign promises, and I want to remind you that, that, uh, Thank you. that you would like to, it says right here, I'll, I'll read not the whole thing, but a couple of sentences. It says Mr. Mathis uh, said he hoped to bring uh, Bremerton Kitsap to access television into the city council chambers. Well, uh, and then I you know, skip a few lines and stuff. It says uh, the city council wasn't too excited to pay the 12000 a year. Uh, and I heard you said you're not going to touch that. But uh, I, I happened to be involved in, in, in that when it went on television the first time. I, I, I was down here making phone calls and took a survey and everything. And the money that coming out of the cable television is for the city council meetings to be to be there. That's the 25 cents. The people of Port Orchard pays 25 cents to see the council meetings. They wanted that, so they said okay. So then another mayor before you, the previous mayor, decides he wants it on a website. Well, then they got together, but Mike thing is, is that if you're going to take the money from the people that's allotted for one thing, and it was for the telecasting of the city council meetings, and use it for another thing, don't, I'd, I'd like to have my money back, is what I'm saying. If I can't see it on television, then why, why are you charging me 25 cents a, a month on, you know? Okay, good point. I, I okay. need to, to do uh, some checking on that, too, to get an answer for you. Well, yeah, it was a campaign promise. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I can answer that to you. Yeah. I'll answer that right now. Uh, yes, it was. But uh, the problem with it is uh, I can propose anything being spent, and the council needs to approve it. And no matter what I put in my budget, it's not going to go through if the council is not going to approve it. So it, I, I, I said that's what I wanted to do. I still want to do it. Uh, the council has weighed in already once and said, no way, they don't want to do it. So uh, I'd like to know what the public thinks I should do at this point. I can't Indian arm wrestle them or something on the ground to see who wins. I, I would hope that if you really want to see that, there's your method of doing it. Get a hold of those council members and say, I want this. Because the mayor wants it, but I'm, I can't. Believe me, Mayor, I have. <laughs> so okay. I have. Okay, All right. that's one thing I did not realize, that, that I would get as much resistance against re-establishing it. But I did. But here's the other thing. Too. Well, you have a bully pulpit with uh, you, I do. You, the I do. city attorneys, your man. I do. You know what I'm saying? If they're well, using money that's not a lot for it, then maybe there's some well, pressure you check, could add. I'm going to check on that 25 cents, because that's the first time I've heard that 25 cents. But. Oh. I wanted to answer your question. The last comment I have on it is my budget does not contain it, not in any way, that 12000 because I heard what my council said. They weren't interested in it, and that's why it's not in the budget. doesn't mean I've, st I've given up on the idea. The idea is still sound. I love the idea of having everything that we're doing broadcast on our website. I wouldn't change that for anything. I think it's a good idea. But I would like to complement that with BCAT. So I'm not giving up. I'm just uh, reloading, I guess is the word. Well, uh, yeah. I'm just reloading on this. Okay, that leads into the third one. 
Uh, and you already touched on that tonight, too. Uh, council members draft a list of reimbursable meetings. Uh, they have uh, meetings, uh, committee meetings at Moondoggies and uh, the taxpayer he's paying for all that stuff. And so I thought about all this here and I went all the way back to the, how the West was won. And uh, yeah, I guess we used to have courthouse meetings and stuff like that in saloons and stuff. But uh, uh, I, uh, I think I came to the city clerk one time and I asked her, I said, uh, they, they was having meetings over at Myrie's at that time. And I think I said, uh, what if I went over to Myrie's over there and went to a public meeting? And I said that there was an, uh, something that was going on that benefited maybe Mr. Myrie's or, and, and I didn't like it and I was up speaking against it or something. I, m could Mr. Myrie's say, hey, you, you get on out of here? Because it's private property and he's got the right to choose who's there and who's not there, right? Uh, you know, it's his own, he owns it, right? So if he don't like what I'm saying, he can leave, but yet you're having a public meeting. So, you know, are you, you, you putting those, the citizens out of the, the ability to speak up against something or something like that? If you're having these meetings at, at some of these places, you know, that are private. And we spend a lot of money, uh, we spent a whole lot of money building this building here, and it's a beautiful building. And I see no reason why the committee meetings can't be here. I, I did, I think, touch just briefly on that, that there are certain things that, that aren't within the purview that the mayor can just do. And, and one of those would be tell any of the council folks and any of the chairs of the various committees where they're going to meet. That's up to the council chair and the committee. Now, once again, if, if you don't like where they're meeting, I, come, come to the meeting. First of all, it's a public meeting. You can come and yeah. listen. But, you can also tell them that you're not happy with it, too. Well, yeah, well, I, I, I have, and I'm just about through. I don't want to hog everything here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I have already told them that point blank. Uh, I think the, the message they gave me is that it's a police item. If I should get in an argument with the man at Mr. Myers and the police oh, will be called oh, in. And, and, you know, I'm not going to weigh in on <laughs> that. Yeah, no, I, no, I don't I expect no you to. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that I've already said <laughs> yeah. it. You know. I can't. I couldn't answer that. Because, no, so. no, you couldn't. So uh, that, that's a... Pretty much all I have, I think. Okay. Thank Anybody you. else? Okay. All right, thank you. I think this comes under public safety. And in April of this year, Seattle City Council addressed a problem that they have recognized in King County as significant given the financial climate that's descended upon all of the communities in this state and this nation for that matter. And that's repossessions that have reached monumental proportions, nothing seen since the, since the 30s. And what it looks like in many places around this country are that speculators are taking advantage of this process, moving in, purchasing homes, and setting up rentals for slumlords. Just flat, I can't say that any clearer, because people will come in from out of state, out of the county, out of the city even, they'll start renting homes and then not maintain them, nor screen the people that they're putting in those homes. I've run into this problem in my neighborhood that there's a house next door that we had absolutely no way of determining who these people were that moved in next door to us. They wouldn't talk to us. The landlady wouldn't talk to us or even identify them or where they came from. We had significant problems with this, these people. Ended up calling the police several times. Eventually, they skipped town. This tells me that there is a significant a significant possible problem to public safety. We know that there, at least one person that was living there wasn't registered as living there. When we did call the police, this person did split as fast as possible. As soon as he saw we were calling the police, he was gone. But he came back. We had heard several times him, him being quite violent with violent outbursts, it was distressing to myself and most of the people in the neighborhood. 
Now that they're gone, this house sits empty. This is, there are now two houses in our, or one house in our neighborhood that's been foreclosed. This one went through escrow and we have no idea what's going on with that because the, the owner that had, is deceased is still listed as the person that, is, this, that is, owns the home. You can't get a hold of these people. The city of Seattle has adopted an ordinance which requires all landlords to register with the city, to have home inspections performed for safety and health, and to provide fines and inspection process requirements outside the state's requirements. And I really think that the city would be a farther ahead for public safety to adopt something similar. Can you address that, please? I can, I, I can, uh, I'll start from the last thing you said and see if I can go backwards from, uh, but uh, I'm a little concerned with that, that, that large hammer approach to, to the fact of inspections and, and that. Um, what's to stop us from just doing it with all property? Your property, your neighbor's property, I mean, uh, a, a, a landlord is is not necessarily a different class of property owner than you. You know what I'm saying? We're both, you know. Yeah, but they are. It is literally a business. They are yes, renting yes, a via, a home or now, whatever for the city, purposes. Of, city of Bremerton yeah. has a business, uh, uh, a, a one time, once a year uh, fee for landlords. Mm -hmm. They they collect it. Do we? Uh, no. But also, I, I just get really worried when uh, we decide that there's a segment of the U.S., there's a segment of a city or a county or wherever is set aside and some special rules are applied to it and not, it's not applied uniformly. So, uh, you know, I think, I think it's a good, a good comments that you're bringing up and I think we need to talk about them, but uh, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, behind that Seattle model, so to speak, or whatever. I don't know enough about it. Um, but I'd have to be very careful before I would get uh, on board with it. Now, another thing we've experienced some problems here is, and I agree with you, it's the ownership of property. Uh, there has been so many bank, we used to call them bank repos, now they're, they're uh, what do they call them? They have another name, same, same story, the bank's taking them back. Yeah, foreclosure, bank repo, and there's a third name. But anyway, we all, we're all on the same page. It's, they're getting them back eventually. But once again, the courts are no faster than, than county and city government is moving, sometimes at a snail, snail's pace. So it's really hard to find out who's responsible for that. You know, when you say, we need to cut the grass, we need to go get somebody, we try to do that, the city does. But we need to get somebody that say, it's me, I'm the one that owns it, and then we can work with them. Or uh, go a step further, we can, you know, cite them for not taking care of it. Uh, it's a big problem, and I don't know how to answer that. Uh, we're working on it. Um, I'm not expecting an easy answer with that because I know everybody has a problem. Well, just who's going to stand up and take responsibility? So that's a big thing, too. Yeah, in, our, in my neighborhood, there are three rentals, including the one I just talked about, and one repossession. The repossession sits empty. Yes. The company that does the uh, security, et cetera, for the place, keeps the place immaculate. It's wonderful. Every other one of those rentals looks like crap. You walk in, you drive into that neighborhood, and you can tell that there's people living here, people living here, and people that don't give a damn about the way the place looks. And who knows? And now with the climate, physical confrontation is way out of that out of that. You can't just walk up to somebody's house and say, who's your landlord? I want them to get this place mown. You have to be able to find some other method and as far as I can tell, the city's police department or the code enforcement should be our interface with people of that nature. You might check with the city attorney and see if there isn't something that can compel people to identify their ownership. The person that owns the place, or the, the deceased person's name that's still on the, person, the place next door to my house, 
the address for that is it now in Georgia. Okay. So I know a little bit about that. It hasn't probably been probated because that's the only way you can get a name off that that wasn't uh, that wasn't willed to somebody. You know, if it right. had to go through probate, that can take a long time, and then. Uh, then the court will finally say, okay, this person is the responsible for well, her. And, and I know that the, the thing went through probate because it was okay. completely empty for 17 months. And then these so. people I moved in. Now, I suspect, and this is not something that I want to even approach too severely, but I suspect that these people were a halfway house type environment sponsored by one of the local churches. And if that's the case, you got to be able to hold them to account too. Right. You know, if you could send me at, at the website up here the information about the Seattle, how they're handling it, anywhere, anything that you find that that uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's passed T, on. It's just T. Mathis at cityofportorchard.us. Excuse me. Passed on April first. Yeah, it was chapter 22.214. What was that, 21? Pardon me? What was chapter, the code? That was the Seattle City Code, Seattle City Ordinance, passed on, I believe it was April 1st, 2012, chapter 22.214. That should be easy for us to look at. But anything else that you come up with as far as ideas on that? I'll look at them. And we'll, we'll talk about them. But like I said, to some degree, I, I have to be sensitive of. Uh, One of the problems I have run into with this is the state, the county. The, the state has all kinds of wonderful landlord tenant laws. But who enforces them? Very few people can afford to go to court and try and force their, their landlords to live up to the law. If it were involving anything like a. Uh, we were involving a, a daycare or a, a place where you have elderly people, elder care or something children of that nature. Or children, yeah. There would be laws and regulations that would be watched very closely because they are concerned with people's safety and health. This doesn't seem to be the way that's happening with the any of the local. Yeah. Uh, we, we also are, are struggling a bit with coming to grips with some of the similar situations on, on houses that people have moved out of. And they're not rental houses, but nobody's living in them. And nobody wants to say they're the owner. It's, it's their transit, you know, nobody has really figured out who it really is responsible, whether it's the bank or the or whatever. So uh, I wish I had an easy answer for that one. I don't. I, yeah. I really can't. Well, yes, yeah, like I said, I'm at 25% in my neighborhood that are... Questions. Well, the, the, the best answer I have is let's get some, some jobs, get some people working, and get them filled. And then people will be proud to have them and they'll paint them and fix them up. That's the best way, but that takes a while. Yeah. I think it, it would be taking away from people's personal rights if we had somebody telling us how to manage our properties. I know when my husband died and I was working and I didn't have time to mow the grass. And he had always done that, but I couldn't. And the neighbor came to me and said, Mary, it's time you mowed your grass over there. And I said, look, if you want that grass mowed, you come right over and mow it and I'll be most grateful. And, and I think that the neighbors can help neighbors to keep their property up. If you want to talk to your neighbors and see if you can come up with something, but having a law to do it, I don't think that's good. Okay. Okay. Oh, and the other thing, in the first town hall meeting, uh, you guys are already doing it, so I probably don't even need to, to tell you, but I said, remember what your mom and your grandma said? Take, be nice, be polite, wait your turn, and don't, you know, don't hog the mic, you know, and you're not, you're not, none of you are doing it, and it's great. And, uh, uh, yes, sir. Um, at the last town hall meeting, I gave you some paperwork that I'd written up regarding uh, maybe requiring business or landlords to, to buy a business license. Um, currently, in the city of Port Orchard, if you're operating a business without a license, I think it's a $500 a day uh, infraction. So there's a little incentive there, but 
you know, we've had rentals in our neighborhood where it's, uh, it's a criminal element. I'm not going to call it anything else. Um, and you talk to the landlord, hey, your, your tenants are making too darn much noise. And he walks 20 feet away and says, the neighbors are complaining. Okay, so where's my, uh, what can I do to protect my property when you've got a criminal element and you've got a landlord that says that neighbor is your, is your problem? Um, I really think that the city should have something where if there's a number of police calls to a residence that that landlord bears some, some of the responsibility for the disruption to the neighborhood. A city is made up of neighborhoods. It's not made up of businesses. It's the people that live here. And if the people that live here and own property here can't live comfortably in their own homes, we've got a problem. And that's, and there's a chunks of the city that are that way, where the landlords are more interested in the rent. If the rent's two days late, they, they're knocking on the door. But if the police are there every night of a week, they don't care, as long as that drug money is paying the rent or whatever. Yeah. And after the people moved out, the landlord did confide, yeah, I think there was some drug problems going on there. Yeah, thanks a lot. But a business license, you know, my wife's an artist, and we have to pay our 40 bucks a year for her to be an artist in the city of Port Orchard. And doggone it, the landlord makes a whole lot more money, even though, you know, they, they can show a loss usually on every property they own. But the bottom line is they're making a whole lot more money than my wife artist is. And okay. 40 bucks is 40 bucks. It doesn't yeah. matter whose property it's Well, made. you know, uh, like I said, Bremerton has such a thing. They do. And, and we uh, should have it here. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, what they, if they uh, earmark that money for something specific, like the inspections or like, you know, and if somebody to go around. I don't know. I'll have to do some checking on that. But uh, you two gentlemen seem to be somewhat saying the same thing but differently or the different things but kind of alike. That's what starts to make some changes. And uh, I would exchange information from each other and, I, and, and move on forward to see if you, there's other folks that feel the same way that you do. Because that's how we're going to get things changed, no matter whether what it is. You know, it's uh, uh, that squeaky wheel thing again. If it's a squeaky wheel, it gets greased. If, if, uh, if we just say things and then walk away, you know, probably might not happen, nothing. But uh, I hear you. You know, and I, I can't say that I agree with you 100%, but I can't say that I don't agree with you somewhat, too. So, uh, but I do know that the process, we need to talk about it. If it's, uh, if it's that important, we need to get enough citizens to say, let's, let's do something about it. Okay, and there's, let's see. Also, I'd like to thank you and, and the councilman that showed up uh, yes. tonight, Cindy and, and Fred. I haven't thank met you. I was late, sorry. But uh, it oh. shows, shows that people care. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll take the mic. Uh, uh, just a second. I, her and then her and then you. Oh, you had, you had your first. I wasn't looking there. All right. Uh, thank you. I, I didn't see that. All right. Just to bounce what you're saying about the landlords and stuff, one of the things I've seen, I, I've been in, all over the United States so far, and one of the things I saw in Bellevue, Nebraska, is what they did was they had a problem keeping up with the landlords. What they did was they just said, okay, well, that the cops got called three times, and the third time they they ask the city gives them an infraction, and it doesn't go toward the land, it doesn't go toward the person living there. It actually goes toward the person who owns that piece of property. And what they do is they don't actually deliver it; they just send a piece of mail to the to the address on that property at the assessors. And then that basically, if it doesn't get paid, it gets put a lien on the house. And now you're actually imposing that person to be able to stop from selling their house. So if you've got and it was a military community, so these military members who are transferring or they're renting their property, if that property isn't taken care of, the city actually holds the lien against it, so they can't actually transfer the title until that lien is changed. So now you're actually holding them accountable for every time the cops have to go and file police support. All so you know, you're able to get your money back that way. And 
make a change, especially if the landlord, motivate the landlord to actually make the change. The, uh, I actually want to bounce off what the gentleman was saying about uh, the city council meetings being at the restaurants. Uh, I read the last one and maybe someone can clarify for me, but it said $20 for the council members sit there and $22 if I, if I register ahead of time to be there. And to me, that's not, I can't show up. I don't know if I can be, like, granted, I have a problem with any of these meetings and the committee meetings being before 8 o'clock or 4 o'clock, 4 p.m., because I can't be there at that time. And if I'd like to be at the financial committee, I can't be there at 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning. And I understand they probably have jobs or whatever they need to do too, but I don't feel that that's open to the community because at 8 o'clock in the morning, people who want to make a difference or get involved are usually working at that time, you know, 9 to 5, 8 to 5, 6 to 5. And that them being at a restaurant, I don't know if I'll be there, but if I have happen happened that day off, I want to be able to show up. I don't want to call, see if I can get a reservation, a chair where they can hear me talk. And that's the problem I had with that. It didn't seem well, like it was inviting. Well, for clarification, that's, I'm not quite sure what that was. It may have been that uh, uh, we had a, uh, what, what the heck was it? It, it might no, be actually one coming No out. reservations so. required at the places that the council committees meet. And, uh, okay. and uh, you know, if you want something to eat, you can eat. If you don't, you just ask for water and just sit there and listen. The way it was worded, I, I believe it was on the website for the ones coming up. It just seems like it was. It might have been a chamber luncheon or something, and that usually they ask uh, for reservations, and you have to pay for that. But. Yeah, I don't remember the top of my head. I just remember the, the fee was twenty dollars, and the other part of it was twenty two dollars that I'd have to pay to, in order to be there. That sounds like a chamber because if you yeah. if you if you reserve your your you know if you reserve early, it's twenty. If not at the door, it's twenty two. Right. But okay. that's not a city it has nothing to do whatsoever. Okay. Uh, some councilman may be there. Uh, I go because I'm a member of the chamber, but it's I'm not going to represent the city. I'm going because I'm a member of the chamber. So. Yeah, and like I said being the time so, difference and all that stuff, it just made it seem to me like kind of didn't want me to be there. You know, you, you made it seem during my work hours and maybe well, that that that, that, so. it, the, that is uh, decided by each committee chair where they have their meeting and when they have their meeting. And once again, if you email the council, it'll go to all the various chairs. The email well, and uh, you know, all I can say is good. Good for you to do that. You know, I mean, it's a good thing to do. What was the city of Nebraska? Belgium. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about at City Council the other night, they said that most of the land acquisition for Tremont is just about finished, and they thought it would be finished by the end of this year. And I am still quite worried. And the people that came down before and were not in favor of the roundabout were um, upset about getting across at that intersection to go either to the junior high school or all of the nursing homes and the elderly that live in that area um, in the senior apartments and that. And um, Mark said that there's going to be a crosswalk down the street from it or um, closer to Port Orchard Boulevard where people can cross. But I truly cannot see teenagers walking a block down the street, crossing at an intersection, and walking back up to walk down to the junior high school. And I see that as an issue that is going to, somebody's going to get hurt there when that roundabout is finished if we don't think about an alternative to seniors and um, people getting across the, at that intersection. And so I, I've been worried about that for some time. I just don't think that it's really been thought about and how people are going to cross there with the amount of traffic coming through there at certain times of the day. Okay. The one thing that I did write, or, you know, that I did notice that the, the uh, or I, I mean, I, we wrote that the Tremont Roundabout will be worked on. When will it be worked on was a question. I still don't have a date about when I, it. I, I realize that. Right. But the other thing about it is the safety. Uh, I know there was a great debate uh, and several months worth of debate uh, about fire equipment and uh, being able to make the turn radiuses around it and well, all they, kinds of things. And so. I think they redesigned that part of it. But it was just always that people would walk down half a block and cross and then come back up because it's all the same. Yeah. 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 Y
just the, I mean, for myself, to walk half a block down the street, to cross and to come back up to be, when I want to cross right here, it's not going to happen, you know. And I just see the kids darting across that roundabout. Um, if we don't think about that, and somebody's going to get hurt, especially, there's a lot of seniors living in, in the housing up there in those apartments. And anybody trying to get across, we really need to think about that. I think we have a crosswalk at the Bethel roundabout. It wouldn't be any different than the Tremont one. What, right at the roundabout, there's one right at the bowling alley there. Yeah. 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 So that's um, maybe. Maybe that's been changed, or maybe it can be changed to have the, the crosswalk right at the roundabout. You know. Um, we can we can kind of we can kind of see what you know what's what's on the latest idea or plan for that, because that's a good point. Thank you. Oh, let's see. I missed anything else. Right at this point? I want to ask this two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. talk about drugs and stuff like houses. And uh, what maybe you have uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you if uh, isn't there some sort of a law where, like, if uh, a house gets raided for drugs or something, and they they, they take the house away from the owner? Uh, it's not. They used not to seize, no you know, drug seizures and stuff like. I thought there was some sort of a law there. I don't know how it works or nothing, but okay. I, I'm not. <laughs> I, I don't have a, a, a lot of knowledge on legal aspects of things. I'd have to check on that. What about when houses are empty so long, like 10 years? We have two rotting houses on our street. One's full of mold. It's got to come down. It's actually a health hazard. The people couldn't live there. You're and just, the other one's been empty for 10 years. Yeah. Why? Why do we allow this? I have no idea. Where I lived in Bremerton and grew up, there was a house that actually was a great house for us kids because they boarded up and we'd figure out a way to get in it again and make it a fort or whatever we wanted. They boarded up and we'd figure out another way to get in. And I think it was vacant with grass growing up around it for like 22 years the whole time I was growing up right and uh, and, and years yeah. after I didn't break in anymore <laughs> you know I have a fork and it was still it was still sitting I can't answer that question as long as they pay the taxes they may own the property yeah, but the other it one may be somebody that lives in coming apart as you well right. know right. okay but that was the other thing you know about that one well so. yes and that was the other thing <laughs> The, the health department. The floors, everything and, is gone. It is like a bad, you know, earthquake in there. It's the horrible. health department is our best, our best asset there. The, the state or the county health department, because they have some teeth in their regulations that we don't have available to the city for other things. Mm -hmm. uh, eyesore, for instance, really hard to get I stuff mean, done. I mean, it's right there. in town, across from the bed and breakfast. You know, yeah. up there, yeah. it's, you know, it's not yeah. out hidden somewhere these places I mean I'm just I know it's a problem I, I think I, I mentioned to laws. you and the, it, yeah. it, it is it is a problem to every city and and I don't think any city has got a good answer for well, it right most now. have them tore down and bill the owner that's what they do yeah our um, particular city is not one of them even Bremerton has a pretty uh, pretty tough law for uh, junk property or hazardous property and you know that the two that I know they did do that, they're up to hearing lawsuits from doing that from the owners. So it's not as easy as it sounds. It sounds great to just but tear I it down and, but uh, uh, yeah, the legal, the legal system's down. blind and it'll go on for years if you do something like that. So, uh, but it's not to say that we can't come up with something that works. Right. We're just know. a short block, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. Safety. I'm There's I'm acutely aware of the raccoons running in and out of that place, uh, parading across the street in broad daylight. Well, see now, now that's a health department issue. Yes, it is. And uh, has anybody contacted? Yes, has anybody contacted the health department lately? I. No. 
Well, that's worth that's worth checking into. We can check into that, you know. And and I hate to pass the buck. Especially the other one, you know, yeah. which is next to Anita. Well, I, I hate to be passing the buck, but that's really, you know, they have a lot more teeth in the, in the health department regulations than we do in some of the other regulations. So, um, I can tell you one thing: that the, the county will, county health department will say about rats. If anybody in oh, yeah, yeah. or whatever, if it's if anyone in your neighborhood is feeding birds, you have rats. Yeah. And particularly up against Blackjack Creek Canyon, no, actually, because the canyon has indigenous uh, wildlife, that's, and that's going to come out and do that. Yes. I would like to say one more thing about uh, this gentleman was talking about criminal elements. <laughs> what do you do? when you have a criminal element in your neighborhood and you try and report it and you call the police and there's retribution. Because believe me, if those people aren't taken away, or even if they are, they're gonna come back after the person that called the cops. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing that we're looking at for public safety with these problem, problem landlords. Uh, I, I, I wrote myself a note to the one gal, and I, I hope she hasn't went, but 911, or it was you, 911, so call, if if your your neighborhood rental, call 911, you know. Um, we got the landlord's uh, home phone. Okay, but. Through, through a number of internet channels and whatnot, we got his home well, phone, and we're calling him. I'm I'm going to talk to the chief, you know, and and get his take on what can what could we possibly do, and uh, uh, it seems to me like uh, more than a few, you know, less than a dozen, more than three, somewhere in that neighborhood, uh, in a certain time frame, and it's it's more than just coincidental. It's become something other than that. But I have to talk to the chief. So what's kind of nice is one of the policemen that, that responded one o'clock in the morning, calmed one of the people down and up and said, you know, maybe you guys should live in the county somewhere. Okay, any other comments on that subject? Okay, I had uh, a handout that showed some police. Did, did everybody pick one up out there? There was a, uh, that showed some information about frequency and what type of calls we're, we've been doing and uh, it's this sheet you seen it did you see it no I'll give you one uh, that I, I brought that to hopefully answer uh, that or uh, give you a chance to see what we're up against here uh, uh, and then I wanted to talk a little about the budget too and I have some uh, I have some uh, information about that, but they both uh, are connected. The budget and, the, and police calls and police frequencies and cost of police officers, those kind of things are all connected, interconnected within the city of Port Orchard. So why don't I just roll the other portion out here that's a, a, a pie chart on the general budget for the city of Port Orchard for 2012. and. Uh, once again, you got you have one. Oh, okay, uh, it kind of explains some of the things that we're uh, we're up against. Um, I, I, at the last one, we we had some fo uh, some folks say that we're not spending enough money for police officers, and we need to spend more money for that. And uh, I think it's probably in that one-page report, wasn't that comment? Anyway, uh, it seemed to me like that That was a comment. But, uh, this gives you an idea of what, what we spent money on this year. And 52% of that now I think I've given the last one out. And I won't be able to tell you. <laughs> oh, no, I have one here. 52% um, of that is law and justice of our budget. 52 cents out of a dollar is, is spent in law and justice. And uh, you can look at it and see the rest of it. Parks and recreation. You know, we were talking about parks and recreation. It's a tough 
thing to fund in a small city, it really is. Uh, 3%, 3 cents on the dollar we have for, for that sort of thing. And a lot of that ends up being spent for uh, their portion of a truck or two and a lawnmower and the things that we need to do, the equipment that we need, and then the hourly wages that we have to pay. So uh, there's not a lot of park money available, you know, for anything. But uh, transportation, 16%, uh, I guess, uh, now I'm not sure, then, then probably cancel the idea that, that some of the park and recreation transportation money comes out of that three. We've got it over here on the pie chart where all transportation uh, expenses come out there. But uh, as you can see, uh, don't have a lot of wiggle room here. We need to figure out the very best way to approach this and we need to prioritize every penny the best way we can. And I've, this is my first budget and uh, if you want, I'll have more meeting, this next meeting I'll go into the budget a little deeper. Right now, the information I've given you is about the 10,000 foot levels. Um, we have a 5,000 foot level, a 1,000 foot level, and then, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? It's the big book level, you know. And that's what we're going through right now. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of like being, a, uh, what is that, waterboarding? But you do it every day for a month. <laughs> that's one of the things I don't really enjoy, being doing the budget, but we have to do the budget. You know, we have to have a balanced budget. So um, let me know if you want to go into a budget more the next time. I'll bring more in-depth material. I just want to material. ask a question. <laughs> you know, I don't, so everybody can hear. On this sheet here that you gave us, mm -hmm. uh, Port Orchard, it says uh, it looks like the percentage there is higher than any other city. Is that right? Um, now this uh, it says 35.7 percent. There's a little circle there by it. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, there it is, right there. Okay, let me 35.7, Port Orchard. That's percent change. Is that mean an increase in mm -hmm, calls mm -hmm, to means, the police? Mm -hmm. Does that tell you something? Mm -hmm. But <laughs> now wait, now wait. It does tell me something, but it, it need, I need to explain too. Uh, we took, we took, we annexed a lot of property too. Uh, you remember our our street signs down there say population 11,144. That's not true. It's closer to 13,500 because of the annexation. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, every, you know, uh, what, what, what is a book I love to read? It's, it's, it's How to Lie with Statistics. <laughs> Anybody that's good at it, there's a college class, believe, didn't say lie. It says how to bend statistics or something, you know. But, uh, so what I'm saying is, yes, we've had a lot more calls, but we've, we've got a bigger service area, too. So, uh, you know, I understand what I you're saying. It's still a lot, and and you can you know, but you need to peel away the onion sometimes. It's not always what it appears, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying that we can't learn something from these statistics, but I'm saying it's not as bad as it, you first think. Oh man, you know. But I mean, if you have, I, I will not walk down Bay Street at night. Downtown, really? Now that now that, now that frightens downtown. me. Oh yeah. That really frightens me. But I will, and and I, I you know, but yeah, that's too much. I hear the sirens every night. I'm within distance of it. <laughs> Did anybody not get one of these that wants one? <laughs> um, so I'd be glad to, to, you know, to go over these more with you or and or get an expert, you know, from our department to go over them. Um, I'm by no means an expert in, in police work or police tasks or anything like that. I'm not an expert in, in, uh, uh, in finance. Uh, I have experts and I, I really count on them, but uh, in each department I have an expert I go to. So a lot of times when I said, yeah, I'll work on that, I'm really not gonna be working on it. I'm gonna go to the expert in that department and get the answers that you need, so. Um, yes? Okay. It has to do with parks. Uh, the the Jimmy Mac contract that you was talking about on the park over at McCormick Woods, I, I believe that's what it's called, Jimmy Mac. Uh, I was here at the meeting when, when that was going on, 
and if my memory if my memory serves me right uh, there was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in it which you said was budgeted for it but there was some kind of grant that we needed to do because it had to be met with uh, you know the funds had to be at least uh, met with the other funds and and did they ever is that coming out of the taxpayer or no and that's a good question it really is here's the problem with with what your information is in part and parcel true, but you heard this and then you came and maybe missed three meetings and you heard that and then two months later something else. So um, the things you heard and, and the times you heard them, I can't answer to that, but uh, here's the story. When we annexed McCormick Woods, there was 600 and some thousand dollars already in a park fund for McCormick Woods. You know, and it was the reason it was there to begin with is because the county has park impact fees. And, and the state says if you collect park impact fees, you have to meet all these requirements and regulations with that. So first, first thing is it has to be uh, used within six years. Secondly, it has to be used in the area that it was collected. In other words, you can't collect it downtown here and use it out there and vice versa. So. Uh, it was a little over $600,000 that was passed down money or passed through money, they called it, from the county. It was in their account that they hadn't done anything with the park yet. But when we took it over, they had to, by law, give it to us. Okay? So for the first year and a half or so, we were hoping to get grants. And most of those were matching grants. That's where you came up with, you heard, uh, uh, we used it from, we would use it for grant. We were hoping to leverage it. You guys have all heard the word leverage, you know, and uh, sometimes leveraging is good, sometimes it's not so good. But we were hoping to be able to say, oh, we'll get a $300,000 grant here. If we have to match it with three, we'll have the money there. Okay? Um, we didn't get the grant that year and a half ago or two years ago. We put in for more grants last year. Uh, to my knowledge, we haven't gotten any grants there. Uh, we'll put in for them this year. But the grant, the grant bucket is shrinking, okay. you know. But we need to do something with the park, okay. And in my opinion, we need to do something so there. You're not paying for it. The, county's not the county collected it from people that built homes out there. See what I mean? So you directly never have paid for it. Okay. It was an impact that fee. No, no. See, that now we're going, uh, maybe just it's confusing because we were talking about, you know, two separate things. Okay. The McCormick money is in a bucket all by itself. All by itself. Right. It's for McCormick Woods Park. Yeah. And, and we can't spend it down here if we wanted to. Okay. I'm not the state won't let us do that. But do I have to spend it out there? Do I have to spend my money out there? No. I, Nobody's I, asking you to at this point. Okay. <laughs> That, but you, you, I think you thought that that was your money, right? General no, fund money or something? No, I didn't. I, I, I knew everything exactly what you said. Okay, I well, what that, money? I know that, that 600000 I feel like yeah, it is 600000 Well, it's a little more now because there's been interest added well, to it. I knew that that 600000 was not enough to build this park. Oh, no. No, it's, uh, it actually, I think they, they have a McCormick if Park it plan. Out, who's pick it's on the Internet. McCormick Park plan is on the internet and it's a beautiful plan. It's like all plans, we're not likely going to be able to get one grant to do it all. Just probably never happened in a million years, but we can do little pieces of it until we get it done. That's the only way we can do it. It's like you eat an elephant, a bite at a time. Okay, a little bit at a time. Right. Where are we getting that little bit of money at? Right now we're not worried about it. Right now we're not worried about it. No, right now we have a, a pot of $600,000. And in my budget, I said, hey, guys, why don't we take 250 of that pot and get something started there? And, uh, and actually, that money was, is going to build some bathrooms, put a parking lot, start building the trail, uh, stub out all the utilities we need, uh, get a beachhead, so to speak. You know, we'll be able to start seeing something there. And, and it makes sense for several reasons. Number one, we have to start spending some of that money because the state says you can only keep it for so long. Number two, those folks out there have, been promised, have heard promises for years about this park. 
You know, I think they need to see a park, or at least a start of a park. You need to see something out of it. And so I think it's a no-brainer. We'll go this far. We still have enough money to match a grant if we should get a grant. We're going to build the, the, it's not going to be like a, a, an overpass all with no freeway. <laughs> huh? Well, go on the website okay. and look at McCormick Park Plan. And it'll show you every part of that plan because that's what we're going to follow is that park plan. I yes. just add to that if you want. Okay. Uh, if you look at, uh, if you go to the McCormick Woods web, uh, website for the actual where the golf course is and everything, they actually have a dream. McCormick Woods, when they built their little thing, they have a dream of what they want McCormick Woods to look like. And then they, the park is part of that. And that's, I believe that's where the money originally came from when they were basically told, no, we, you can't be a city. You can't do that on your own. So now you've got all these people that are moving in there, and this is the dream that they bought into. Like, I, I bought my house out there, and it, part of my, my property for my house paid toward that. So, and it... It's continuously acquired, and I don't know if you covered it the last meeting that it was, we're at 600 houses now, and it's supposed to be 1,600 houses, so people are going to continue to pay to build this park, and that's, I imagine that's where part of the money is going to come from. Right, but, right. Yeah, there's... Uh, you know, I'm not saying we're not worried about where the rest of the money's coming from, but not today, and it's not coming out of anybody's pocket by taxing them right now. But sooner or later, we're going to have to come up with the rest of the money to finish the park. Okay, well, I won't buy into that scenario, but okay, if you're saying <laughs> I'm going to listen to it. <laughs> I'm going to I'm well, sorry you don't buy into it. Now, I'd like to meet with you, and, and we'll go talk to, to, uh, to people that can, conv or can explain it better than I can. No, you you know, because, I, you know, I sometimes chase my tail. You know? <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to segue into that. Uh, I came to the last council meeting where I tried to... Start voicing my opinion. I'm going to keep voicing my opinion for even so that the mayor can hear it again and he can see it on video as many times as he want. Uh, so I live out in McCormick Woods and there's a new building that now last town hall meeting I was sadly mistaken that that was McCormick Woods also, but it's not. It's part of city of Bremerton. And uh, so I tried to bring up to the council's meeting and maybe the council member will see it again. That So if you look ahead, the, uh, we've done our investigation is to figure out what exactly they're doing there. They're 1,200 square foot plots. And the people that are building it are building, they're, they're the same people that are building the West Park housing, the low income housing over there. And what, I don't want to be like, you know, stereotypical and say, hey, low, uh, low budget people, or people, you know, low income people are usually bring crime and stuff. But looking forward, I see five, 10 years after they build it, crime starts going up. City of Port Orchard starts paying the bill for this. And, you know, Whereas, uh, if you look at where Anderson Hill over by the Juvenile Center is, how far away from City of Bremerton is that? Who's going to respond to that? Well, probably not City of Bremerton, because if they're doing it, at, if it happens at 3 in the afternoon, of course has traffic. They'll be there in about an hour and a half. What did they fall back on the City of Bremerton? By then, you've got shootings that are, you know, and whatnot. It's going to cost us in the long run. And that's why I've already talked to the mayor and I've brought to city council. Is Right now, they're having funding problems, or they're having problems connecting to the sewer. And when you're talking about things like that, yeah, you're you're building a bridge now. They're trying to make a little bit of money, but in the end, it's going to cost us. And I'm going to keep bringing it up at every council meeting I can be at because it's forethought. It might not cost us two years after they build it. It might help us out because they're going to come shop down on Bay Street. They're going to spend their money here, but it's going to run get run down just like West Park did what 10 years ago before they built started building the new one. It's going to start turning into a crack house, and it's going to drive down the price of property and all that stuff. So that, that's why I keep bringing it up, because I, I see that it's going to cost us in the long run. They're just going to get the taxes off of it and the extra money. So. Well, it seems like to me, if I go back more than 10 years, that that, that area that we're talking about was set aside for watershed. So now we're, now we're involved in something different. So. I know better than to, to say stuff about <laughs> what Bremerton's doing. I, 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 I wouldn't appreciate it if the Bremerton mayor started spouting off about what we're doing here. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I always tell people I have quite a lot to do right here in town <laughs> in this area. You know, so I don't know about Bremerton. So, um, uh, let's see. Did we cover the majority of the four items we were going to cover tonight? Let's see. Could we put that back? Back up again, yes. Let's see. Foot fairies. Does anybody have any comments about foot fairies? The last time we met, um, some other folks thought 
that, uh, that we need to do something about foot ferries. And uh, I'm interested in what your ideas are that we can do about foot ferries. Um, and I'm interested in any good ideas because, um, or ferries in general, if you want to broaden the scope of the, let's talk about Washington State ferries. I know you've seen in the paper they're cutting off uh, probably three runs in our Seattle to, to Bremerton. Um, not a good thing, not a good thing for Bremerton and especially, uh, especially Bremerton and not a good thing for Port Orchard because we are connected by the water and we're connected by our foot ferries. That's part of the highway system, isn't it? Transport yes, ma'am, that's what I say. <laughs> now, I don't have the website that we should say that over and over again to our legislators because once again, they don't listen to me and nobody elected me king. I wanted to be king but I couldn't find a position like that. I, so I, you know, doesn't work. So, but the legislators here in our county need to get that message. And we need to take it to everybody in the state and say, come on, you guys, we don't do this sort of thing with I-5 or any other state highway. Tell the, tell the citizens in the area that I-5 is going by that we're going to charge you to go out and mow the grass around I, your section of I-5. But that's what they're telling us. Um, uh, the state needs to hear it loud and clear. When are you going to man up, guys, and take care of your responsibilities? That's my opinion. That's just an opinion, of, you know. But um, our legislators need to hear hear us, you know, encourage that, and then th then we can maybe get something done. Uh, that was probably a little too too <laughs> too strong, but uh, I truly believe that they are a highway, also along with you, and that we need to take care of them as such. And it isn't Bremerton's responsibility, it isn't Port Orchard's responsibility, and it isn't just the Coleman Dock area people's responsibility. We all use it. Everybody in the state uses it. So, ah, enough said. Yes, sir. Let me get to I think a solution might be to uh, have the city council craft a resolution that would uh, perhaps say something to the legislature, legislators that we, we as a city do not want them to cancel the ferry routes and that we want the legislators to appropriately fund Kitsap Transit or have Kitsap Transit properly fund the foot ferries. Uh, it seems that Kitsap Transit has used the recent budget difficulties that the country has faced as an excuse to cut the, lot, uh, cut the ferry service to Port Orchard. So my request would be that the council pass at least two resolutions, one to the state regarding the state ferries and the other one uh, that they would pass it to uh, Kitsap Transit, they would pass a resolution asking for Kitsap Transit to properly fund the foot ferries to encourage businesses downtown uh, to stay open longer. Okay, thank you. The other night, Don Ryan spoke at City Council, and I think in these resolutions or letters to the legislature, we need to include the information that he presented, like I think he said 60% of the money spent downtown would be after 6 p.m. and 70%. I mean, those were pretty um, interesting statistics, and, but there's nothing open after 5 p.m., so all of that money is going some other place because of the amount of money that's spent after the 6 p.m. time. Okay. I think he also said, and I agree with that, that uh, what was the percentage that women control? 80%. 80 percent of that spending, of that 100 percent of the spending, is directly in the control of ladies. And it's, that's the case in my house. Um, I don't like shopping. I don't go there. If I, it's like pulling teeth, you know. So yeah, you're right. We, can, uh, we should be able to learn from that, and we should be able to work uh, a better should be used to 
you know, back up the reason why we need the fairies. Yeah, yeah. So. Once again, we, you know, help me help yourself. Uh, just uh, jot all these numbers down and get your legislators uh, con a connection or website or whatever and their phone number and just maybe get in a habit of, of talking to them like you would talk to any of us, you know, just or your neighbor. Just knock this off. You know, what are you doing? I, I'm not agreeing with this. This is what I think. Uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, I was visiting with Tim Sheldon, uh, senator from Mason County, and he said, we just don't hear from people. People don't, you know, let us know. And I said, Tim, what are you doing to let them make it easy to hear from you? Well, all we're doing is we're doing this. I says, Tim, I've got a hold of you three or four times, and I've never talked to you. I always talk to one of your aides, and you know, you know, I'm not finding fault, but I'm saying, what have, you know? Don't always say, well, they don't talk to me. What have you done to make it easy for them to talk to you? So, but I think yeah. there's also out there. I know that on several of the organizations I go, people. I, I attend a lot of the city council meetings, and they think that I'm stupid. They, I mean, they said you're not. You don't make a change. You people don't listen. They've made up their mind before it's presented, and uh, so there's a, a mindset out there that we don't make a difference by a lot of people. Oh, I'm sorry. Anybody else? Well, I think, I think the people can make a difference if they show up to council meetings. And that's, that's been traditionally a problem. I've been going to council meetings for quite some time. And generally, they aren't well attended. They're attended, but they aren't. I mean, there are more people in this room, even in that side of the room, that are here rather than at a council meeting. And just so everybody knows, the left side of the bench is up for election this coming year. And I do have to commend Councilman Member Chang, but he's been here for, for both of these, uh, these town hall meetings. And out of all of them, he's the most res responsive to citizens' input. So I. It's my kind of shameless plug for his re-election <laughs> next time. <laughs> and that's, that's welcome at this venue also. Um, once again, I talk to people and I says, no booze. And if you want to applaud, applaud. That's fine. But just no booze. If you, if you say something and everybody applauds, they must have liked it. If they don't say anything at all, they don't do anything at all, they probably still might have liked it. But they might not have liked it too. But no booze. That's not good. <laughs> right. Maybe they're and, and, because he gave up the mic or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that could be too. Regarding the foot ferries, um, Kitsap Transit hires a subcontractor to run the foot ferry. Yes, indeed. Yet Kitsap Transit paid a lot of money for a, a boat to run to Seattle that the voters uh, struck down a few years ago. Uh, I, I don't understand why they don't step up to the plate and buy those boats like a, and take the profit margin out of the middle, um, maybe be a little more responsive to the voters as every city has a representative on their board. Uh, so maybe we could flex a little muscle there and have them step up to the plate and take over the foot ferries rather than subcontract them out. Well, I'm really frustrated. I had a sheet you remember, Brandy, we had a sheet this afternoon that, that answered those questions about Horlock. It was in two, let me try to see if I can remember. In 2002, Horlock was sold to. Smith. Um, what? Smith. Huh? Smith. Yeah, but what's the name of the operating company? You still have it? You have it? Oh, look here. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot. Okay, let me, let me read this real quick, because it, it, it addresses exactly what you were talking about. Um, uh, Mayor Mathis, uh, at the last meeting, a topic was discussed at length uh, about the, fat, the foot ferry service in downtown. Uh, many people were calling the days when Horlock was running it until midnight, 
that was the best service we ever had. Okay, so uh, could I get some background information for the mayor? Uh, Rhiannon Fernandez asked. Uh, uh, John uh, over there at, at Kitsap Transit, or tra yeah, Kitsap Transit. His answers were, when the ferry service was purchased from Horlock, uh, the current employees who operated a foot ferry Kitsap Transit, for Kits see, Horlock sold out to Kitsap Harbor Tours. Kitsap Harbor Tours contracts to Kitsap Transit to operate the ferries. So the real owner is Kitsap Harbor Tours. Um, but they're under contract for Kitsap Transit to operate them. There is some confusion over a comment that uh, Kitsap Transit cannot run foot ferry service on Sundays because there is no bus service on either end to meet it. Um, is that the reason there's no service or is it because when Sunday service was cut due to budget shortfalls, it was decided all service, including ferries, was not going to operate on Sunday to help close the budget gap. And, uh, oh great, we don't have the answer sheet to that. <laughs> that, I, that was, hmm. It's a great build up. Mm -hmm. It's a great build up. Yeah. Um, his answer um, might be out there on the table. I, Is it on your phone? <laughs> no, it's it's here. It, it was here. I brought it upstairs. I, at least I was intending to bring it upstairs. Um, any other comments until we can see if we can lay our hands on that document? <sighs> Maybe till next month. <laughs> Maybe I'll answer that next month because I don't seem to have it. Oh, any, where's the mic at? Do I have it? Oh, there. Um, so, whoever said we need to think about doing something about it, we are thinking about doing something about it. At least I am thinking about trying to figure out what can be done about it. Now, uh, City of Bremerton, City of Fort Orchard, and the port uh, set aside money in the budget last year to run it uh, for an additional six weeks or seven weeks on Sunday because we knew how vital it is. Then this is the foot ferry just between Bremerton and, and uh, Here's his answer. Oh, here's his answer. Okay. All right. I, I was reading. Okay. Purchase of the foot ferry uh, as well as the Carlisle from Horlock Transportation was initiated in 2002 and completed in 2003. Towards the end of 2003, Kitsap Transit issued a request, a request for proposal for operation of the service of which Kitsap Harbor Tour was selected bidder. The crew, and op the crew that operate the foot ferries between Bremerton and Port Orchard, Annapolis and Bremerton, are Kitsap Harbor Tour employees. As far as foot ferry service on Sunday, the foot ferry route is part of Kitsap Transit's service. We treat it just as we would one of the uh, buses, bus routes. When the decision was made to cut all service on Sundays, this meant foot ferry as well. And that's from Kitsap Transit. That's their official position. So, you want the mic? <laughs> okay. No, I'm glad. <laughs> so I, I would ask that the council, again, ask Kitsap Transit to properly fund Kitsap Harbor Tours and separate it from I, what I what it sounds like is that they're hiding behind calling the ferry a bus route just like the state is hiding behind not calling the ferries a highway. A, a highway. I mean this is a bunch of hooey to use a, a good way of saying it. And we need, I think the council needs to step up because they're represent, representatives of the city. And I don't care whether Mr. Clausen is on the council or not. The council needs to step up because it's impacting the town's economic vitality. So that's my two cents. No, no, even, even uh, one cent? You got, no, you got a nickel. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the 
they had a work study on yeah they, uh, if I, I i attended that at two, a year uh, four years ago yeah what was that 2008 Okay. Good but, well, you, you can check the. You can check no, the. I believe you, but a good memory. You I, can check the records. Yeah. yeah so. There should be minutes. Yeah. And uh, that's when you lost it. It's too late now. Oh no! Well, I don't believe. I, I don't believe in that. I don't believe it's ever too late to make some difference. Just don't know what it is at this point. <laughs> They get paid to run the ferry from Kitsap Transit on certain days at certain times. That's my understanding, yeah. Can't we just ask them to do work other times and That's collect the, the tolls from that? I mean, yes. if, if it's a money-making thing, I would think that either they would want to make more money than what they currently are, and if Kitsap Transit isn't paying them anymore to to run on Sunday, they could still run one, two, seven, ten, whatever runs and keep the money for themselves. And if it's not profitable for them to do so, I'm sure that all the businesses downtown who want those customers to come over from Port Orchard or from Bremerton would charge an extra penny for every dollar that they whatever and rent the boats to come over on Sunday too. If it was that big of a deal for them, if it's that big of a deal for the city, why aren't we just talking to them instead of the other people, you know, Kitsap Transit who is, you know, renting them for a few days a week? Well, good question. And one answer I have for you, we did that. The city of Bremerton, the city of Port Orchard and the port of Bremerton shared three ways. I, I think we put in a budget, was a five, 4500 I think. Um, it's 7000 for each entity. What well, is now? Months, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, so um, that was, and then they charged $2 each way. Yeah. And then uh, that seven is worst case scenario that if they don't get any any riders. Good and, case was 4000 mm -hmm. Good case was 4000 Okay. Yeah, so was, we paid yeah. 4000 two years ago each um, summer Sundays. Um, was our portion of the share to fund those the ferry runs and then this year because of the ridership was down and we increased Sundays um, it actually ended up costing the city um, about seventy seven hundred dollars um, so it, it's expensive it's twenty one thousand dollars just to run um, the ferry it's it, it's For you what, have five, five six weeks uh, yeah season? it's probably about yeah, two and a half months, maybe. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, about six so to eight So, for two and a half weeks. months, eight, it cost the city of Port Orchard how much? The, the port of Bremerton, the city of Bremerton, and the city of Port Orchard, it um, was over $21,000. $21,000 for two and a half months. One day, yeah. For one day. For one, sun, for one service, yeah. And the problem so is... So, is it that people don't want to come to Port Orchard? The ridership on an average of a Sunday ridership was probably 20 people. I mean, you had multiple runs where there was nobody on the ferry. So we're complaining about, I mean, I just want to make sure I wrap my head around it. Our issue is that we want the state and the transportation department to pay 21,000? No, not the state. The they're the, two different entities. We're, we're talking okay, about. Okay, Kitsap County? No. Transit, somebody. Kitsap Transit. Kitsap Transit. Right. We want Kitsap different Transit to pay $21,000 for two and a half months of nobody using that service. That's our issue? I mean, it, why don't we just take $1,000 and anybody who wanted to come across, we rent them a cab. I think the biggest deal is when you can't rely on something, you, you 
make other arrangements to, for transportation. People can't rely on the buses anymore. They can't rely on the ferries anymore. So they drive around and just to have it on such a sporadic time, it, it takes time. I mean, they tell you five years to get a business going, you know, to build up your clientele and to get to become secure. When you only have things on a very sporadic um, schedule, people don't know that it's going to be there, and so they make other arrangements if they're going to participate. So you're saying that if it rained all the time for the rest, every single Sunday for the rest of eternity, that more people would use it because they know it's there? I would think so, people? that you can rely on it. Well, first of all, the businesses have I think Don said that there used to be over 20 restaurants downtown. Now there's four. Right. <clears throat> you know, if if you don't have the customers coming in for it, I mean, a lot of it used to be the Navy guys coming over for in the evening. They don't have a way to get here. Okay, you know? but those businesses left before we shut down the ferry. No. On Sunday. So you're saying? No, actually Sunday, not. You know, no, not actually. They, they, we've been losing. You know, the last couple of years, lots. Okay. Yes. Yeah, lots of. So, if we brought the, the ferry back on Sundays, then we would have more businesses downtown, more restaurants. Would be a lot of people free. believe that's true. That okay. believe that's true. Yeah. And, uh, it's not just not just the ferries. Yeah. When they cut the service on Sundays for buses, that eliminates a significant link for anyone wanting to go anywhere in this county that doesn't have a car. So you're talking about the people who would normally take a bus, maybe get a discount because they're low income. They can't do that. They can't come here. They can't go there. They're stuck. There's no bus that goes from here to Bremerton during that time. There's no ferry. There's no, nothing. So Kitsap Transit has been very short-sighted in that all they were doing was looking at the bottom line and not looking at the full consequences of what they were doing to the community. And this has been a consistent complaint about Kitsap Transit since their inception. They don't listen to the ridership. You know, uh, I just wanted to weigh in a little bit on the, the, uh, the comments here that Washington State ferries, uh, 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 the director, Mr. Uh, David Mosley, came to a, a meeting for he was either Kitsap Transit or, or uh, one of the other uh, committees uh, that I sit on, and he spoke to us for about two hours about ferries in general uh, and specifically foot ferries, you know, non-passenger car carrying ferries. And he said, guys, it doesn't pencil out in, in your, your question. It doesn't work. You can't do the math to make them pay for this. You can't charge enough per rider to ever, you know, pay for the whole service, you can't. He says if you did, if you did 60%, if, if you were subsidized just 60 cents on a dollar, you'd be doing a good service. In other words, the best you could expect is 40% to pay for, you know, to earn, and 60% you'd have to come up with, either with sales tax, whatever kind of tax you come up with. So that's a reality of life, I think. I mean, this man knows what he's talking about. So. We have to decide if we're going to do this or we're going to do that, you know, but we, if, if we're going to treat it as a highway, then we need to fund it. Uh, if we're going to treat this as our highway between Bremerton, we need to figure out a way to do it. But we're going to have to subsidize it heavily. And the, the last two times Kitsap Transit asked the voters to increase the sales tax to subsidize something, they didn't, didn't want to do it. So. But isn't, I mean, I, I totally agree that it's a highway. It says so in all of the concealed carry laws, and it's Washington State, but that is a highway. That's why you can transport things on it. But why are we dealing with Kitsap Transit and not the state, as that is a highway? We don't pay, I mean, there's, we don't pay anything to drive on I-5 except for our taxes. Or our taxes paying for the ferry, you know, we can still get our, you know, pay our cost to go on the ferry, but that should be paid for by, like, 
Department of Transportation, shouldn't it? Or the, the highway or whoever pays for I-5, whoever pays for 101, all the other highways. Yeah, through through stuff like that. And I mean, granted, we'll, we'll help out with whatever we can with the money that we're paying for the tolls, just like we are for the bridges, just we are for, you know, all the other toll services that we use. But that should be a transportation issue and not kits up anything. I, uh, if it's a highway, it's Washington State Highway, right? Not, not the ferry route. But, in yeah. Not part of the yeah, that's not part of Washington State Ferries. That's just the bus route. That's just between Bremerton and Port Orchard. And it, Kitsap Transit is involved too. And the Port of Bremerton got involved because they, they wanted people to come back and forth between the two ports. How hard would it be to make it become? A highway to like who might be system. might be kind of hard, but what we can do, what we can do is we can do like you said, we can enlist the help of the the uh, the business folks on both sides, most des destinations, Bremerton and Port Orchard. Um, try to continue to work with Bremerton, and Port Orchard can do what it can. Um, we need to build back both waterfronts up, both downtown areas. We need to really bad because it pays dividends in the form of revitalizing the community. More people want to live here, but more importantly, it's sales tax. The more businesses you fill on the waterfront, the more sales of whatever they're selling, and then it, it's, it increases your money. So I think it has to be a cooperative effort between the two cities, the port, and all the business people. And uh, uh, I, I don't know who <coughs> earlier I said, somebody said, well, that's just never going to happen. Don't be so sure. We might make it. We might be able to make some inroads in it. I know that budgets are tight everywhere, and I'm not sure. Well, what did we put in for the budget this year? I can't remember. Five for, for the ferries. Um, nothing's in the budget. Nothing's in it's, right uh, now. Being yeah. discussed uh, there's just any money to put in there for it. Um, the council may want to do that. They'll have to find the money. Uh, the, the the funny thing, or not so funny, about our budget is. We make the best estimates we can on income. Uh, we set a budget up that has to be balanced, and then we move things around. You know, but we can't spend more than we have coming in. So there wasn't any money to even do the seventy-seven or seventy-five hundred. Yeah, I was just asking. I just wanted to ask you a question about uh, if you could maybe organize some of the local politicians and start talking about maybe cutting taxes and. Cutting sales tax is. Uh, I like to hear that dialogue. I always hear about raising them, but I don't ever hear about cutting well, them. Well, you didn't hear any raising from me tonight. Uh, I just want to set the record straight. But one of the things that's already happening is our taxes are being cut. You just don't see it because when sales tax, you know, they don't sell things. People, the more storefronts become empty, we get a tax cut. Our sales tax revenue shrinks. So. Uh, and we have a double-edged sword here because property taxes now are on the downtrend too. So, um, uh, you know, it's it's our our revenues are, are down about a half million dollars year to year from last year to this year. So, in effect, for all the reasons and there are several other reasons too that they're down there, but when you accumulate all the reasons, half million dollars is a lot of money to find. Um, so, uh, tax cut, uh, it's, uh, we have three bargaining units, and actually we have four, and we've settled with three, and thankfully the three that we settled with have agreed to no salary increases next year, and I'm so thankful for that. They, they saw that we're already down in projected income half, close to a half million dollars, and they knew we don't have the luxury of a printing press. We can't do it like the federal government. When they run out of money, they just print some more money. We can't do that. Our budget system doesn't work that way. So uh, I'm tickled that our bargaining units, the three that have settled, have said, okay, we'll get off the, the ever-increasing income. And by the way, that's, that's the single biggest elephant in the room is, is employee costs and benefits. You know, I mean, that's... You know, I, it is so. Um, but I'm not whining. I mean, that's the reality of life, and we're going to make it work. Uh, we're going to do it by priorities. There's going to be a few things that we don't be able to do. Um, that's what I always tell my staff. I said, let's sit down 
and show me what we have to do. What must we do? And then prioritize everything from that point. So that's a suggestion. But um, the, the whole point is um, tax cuts. That, that's a hard one for this year and for this mayor for this year. I'm just trying to hold my arm. What I'm doing here is I'm treading water and trying to keep my head out. So um, we are. Everybody in, in City Hall here is, is, is stepping up. I'm really proud of them, you know. And uh, year after year, we're asking them to do that. And year after year, they find a savings or they, they do something that, uh, uh, you know, that helps us. So, uh, so far, so good. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Fred Chang. I am one of the seven council members, and I believe the others are actually interested in what people say, uh, but in their schedules, they may not have been able to fit it in. But what I wanted to do was thank you for coming and telling us what you think, but also encourage you to continue trying to talk to your council people. There are so many ways you can do it. Um, you can come to a council meeting if it's convenient for you and talk to all seven of us at once, or you could try to email us all at once. Um, I think the most effective way, if you have the time, is to maybe email or send a letter and then read it to us and follow up with your email or letter later because we need that, that reminder of what you've said in person. And I think, um, I, don't, I forgot your name in the court. That's fine, Charles. Okay, Charles. Um, I was glad to hear that you wanted to attend some of the committee meetings because I think one of the problems is a lot of the council members, some council members may not believe that the public is interested. And it's sort of a, a chicken and egg thing. They feel, well, nobody ever comes to the council meeting, so why should we schedule it? Um, since I work in Seattle, my hours are limited, and I've had to schedule things in the evening. Um, a committee I chair, which is lodging tax, happened to be comprised of people that preferred the evening so they could attend. And um, there were actually also a lot of people working who said that they could not attend before 7 p.m. So I think if you can remind the council of sort of tell them your story to say like I work over in Silverdale from like whatever your hours are I think that will affect how they think about you know people's interest in meetings um, I don't see any problem if all meetings were held at City Hall um, I can tell you separately or if unless you're all interested why I think council members like to have their meetings early or at restaurants um, it some of them are working and they have to fit into their schedule like finance they do it before they go to work um, and some of them may feel that they are putting in extra hours because they're on a certain committee and they feel that um, it's not so much entitlement, but they feel that the, the breakfast that they get paid for by tax dollars is sort of a small reimbursement of their time. Um, not everyone feels that way. Um, I'm kind of on the fence, but some like the mayor here, he will not accept that. He pays for his own uh, breakfast. So if you see that he's gone to a public property meeting, he actually has a separate bill, and I respect that. Um, I sort of, there are some things that I will stand up and, and try to fight for over others, and so you do pick your battles. But some of the things I heard tonight that I think you should not give up on are you know, standards for how can we get more people to, how can we get the city to have more owner-occupied homes? Uh, that's a really tough question, but I think that's something that we really want. I think that would help. Not that all rentals are bad, because some of them are great. We have a lot of really great people from the shipyard and the, 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 um, the military who are great tenants, but it's, it's the bad eggs that make them all look bad. Some streets, I sympathize, are half, half rentals, and some of them are fine. Uh, some, you know, you can have one rental and it brings down the whole neighborhood, but I would encourage you to continue thinking of solutions and maybe talking to your council members individually. Remember, you need four to pass an ordinance. Um, you may have one, that might be me, depending on what your ordinance is. But I'm also really intrigued by what Jerry said about the revenue that comes in from the cable um, bills. Now, I don't have cable, so I don't know what the amount is. Uh, but I believe there is a fee that's charged to the city, and I believe the spirit of the law, at least, if not the letter of the law, is that that money collected from your cable bill should go for a specific purpose. Um, I certainly honor that because I'm very careful about where, where, where the funds come from and what they go to. Um, but there may be some flexibility, and I think the council feels that they are, they may be, 
meeting the spirit or the, the letter of the law by putting it on you know, the website. And I agree with the mayor that I would like it both. I'd like it to be on cable and, and, and on the website. I think both is good because I've heard from people who can't sleep at night and they watch these things and they say, oh, I saw you at 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and I'm always amazed that people you know, are watching it. But I think that's another way to, to get outreach to people. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, please try to contact your council people. The, their, all of our information is on the website. And I think we do value hearing from you. You may not get a response right back unless you ask for one. But that's just what I want to say. Thank you. Um, yeah. Sorry that's so long. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that um, I, I never knew about, I mean, I know that there's town hall meetings and city council meetings and stuff, but I don't really know when and where. And I, if it's not right there in front of me, I, it's not right, it's not part of my life, you know. Um, I can tell you exactly when the fireman's spaghetti feed is, though. You know why? Because I see that sign every single time I drive out of town and drive in, you know, when I leave for work, when I come home. I see that sign. Why isn't there, I mean, do we, is there even like a reader board thing down here that you can put, like, every church has one, all businesses have one? Why not put, please come to City Hall town meeting on this day, this time, your comments are needed, please come, fill the seats, tell your friends. Um, the only reason why I'm here today is because at the disaster preparedness thing that they had here two weeks ago, the mayor said, hey, there's a town hall meeting on the 11th. I was like, oh, hey, I guess I go check that out, because I knew about it. I'm, I didn't go looking for that information, but it, it was just right there in front of me, and I was like, oh, I'll go check it out. And the only reason why I knew about the disaster preparedness is because some check on my wife's Facebook page said, hey, anybody, any preppers out there want to go and check this thing out? And so it was somebody told us, but again, we didn't go searching for that information. It was just, it presented itself in front of us. And I think that if you want more people in these seats, you want more people at your city council meetings, you need to tell them where they're at, except for, you know, apart from a place that they're not going to look. Okay. You know, um, that we can always do better at advertising these things. They, they, we did have a little flyer in the, uh, in the water bills that came out. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there was, I don't know if the newspaper put anything in this time. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But we, we usually always try to tell them that it's a, a public service, you know, if they like to pre present that. And they do and they don't. As far as a reader board, uh, we're going through a new sign ordinance now. The, the Planning Commission is working on that right now as we speak. And there's a big deliberation between no reader boards of any kind, no moving letters, no you know, fancy stuff like that. And maybe some, maybe, you know, I don't know what they're going to come up with. Um, don't go to that meeting. I should, but I, it just uh, it seems like I'm always at another meeting. So, But anyway, um, they're going to be working on a sign ordinance. I would love to see something here like that. Um, once again, it would be probably up to me, and after the new sign ordinance is created, I'll be able to see if there's what I, what, maybe you and I could talk about it. And then I have to put it in the budget. And, uh, and then I have to make a good case for it, which I'd be glad to do, because I agree with you. It'd be nice, especially coming into town here, about uh, 14, to, what was the number I heard? Somebody gave me a number of people to drive by City Hall here. Uh, Anyway, it was a huge amount of people each day. So you're right. Um, there'd be something worthwhile, worth looking into. But it doesn't have to be anything flashy, though. I mean, I no. see garage sale signs all over the place, and I turn because there's an arrow pointing, you know, to that place. You can get a piece of cardboard and a stick. Mm -hmm. After the election, just take all those election signs, <laughs> flip them over, and put and melt them down. City Hall, <laughs> right? Just right. City Hall meeting this Tuesday at 7 and just go stake them out in people's yards and you know you'll have some people it doesn't have to be shiny with fireworks going off of it like par Fords. it can just be like I mean just any sign that we strap across the 
the the the roadway here city hall meeting tuesday night all right I'm gonna, and then I'm every gonna, tuesday I'm night you can throw it month. out there gonna, if you want i have one more scheduled and that's uh 11th of next month or a little flyer no it's not the 11th it has to be uh Mm -hmm. I want to say it's the 15th. Okay. I think it's November 15th. Yeah. Um, there is a flyer out there on the back. Yes, on the I table. But anyway, um, that's the last one scheduled. That's by no means the last one. I, and I want to have as many. Uh, I, somebody, uh, actually a mayor from another city said, how long are you going to do that? And I said, until nobody shows up. Then three more times. And they go, well, well, that seems like a waste of time. I says that's only my waste of time. Oh well, and, and a couple of staff that, that are, you know, I don't want to waste their time. So as soon as nobody shows up, I'll say go home, and then I'll wait a while. But um, yeah, it's the 15th of November, and we're out of time. But I'll be glad to stay and talk to you. Uh, but we'll turn the cameras off, and our staff can go. But the other thing is, what topics do you think we sh I should, you know, zero in on next month? Uh, if you've got any ideas, should I just expand more on the budget, or, or what do you think? You know. Hmm? Uh, the, the, it's, they're not, and it's not going to be stabilized. And, and the, the the increase is is uh, a four year increase or three year increase? I forget what we. Oh, we we did, we did. You did. Yeah, the council did. And and it's it's phased in, so you're going to see increases for the next two years or three years. Yeah, it's the aging pipes. <laughs> but I I can talk about that. I will if you come back. If you promise to come back, I'll have a report on that. What's wrong with talking about a watershed? You know, all great cities have. Well, we have watersheds here. Have you ever been up to some of these wells? Have you no, ever been up to watersheds are different than a, uh, than a reservoir. Have you been to, to well too? R yeah. Reservoir, you need to have a water source. Uh, we, we, you, you need a water source if you're going to have a reservoir. Washington's not, yeah, I think I said that. Yeah. We get water. Uh, well. I know where a place is. There's a lot of springs and stuff like that. Well, the other thing that is we already have the wells drilled. They're already uh, paid for. <laughs> well, you and I can debate that. that. I don't think that's a big, big, yes. I just want to say that I'm really happy to live in the city of Port Orchard. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I am too. That you're the mayor, and I'm happy oh. that I can come downtown anytime I want to and get most anything I want. And somebody, I went home one day and a man was in my house, the robber. Of course, it's my fault. Left the door locked by accident. She went home and hit my purse. And the police were there in two minutes. I live up on top of Pottery Hill. And they got that guy. Okay. And I and I will always remember how punctual they have been when we needed them. We had drugs going across the on some property next to us. Mm -hmm. And I called the somebody, the sheriff or somebody, and got it anonymous. <coughs> I didn't have to say who I was or anything. Those guys were gone the next day. Okay. And really you know, and, and I'm sorry, there was a couple of officers, off-duty officers here today at the meeting earlier. And I'm sorry they didn't stay to hear that comment, but they can watch it on TV, and I'll tell the chief. And, and when I see them in the hallway, I'll tell them to be sure and watch that, because I'm glad that you got that kind of service. Yes, it was and, perfect. Yeah. They and they do a, a mighty fine job. And you know, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, present this that graph to make anybody look bad because I don't think it makes us look bad. I think it makes us look good. Look at the, the response times. Yeah. You know. So um, uh, I just wanted to bring that up for the discussion. You know, so you'd have it for discussion. So anybody have any ideas for discussion next time? That and you, you know, if you're not here. There'll be hopefully some new folks, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's the 15th of next month. So on a Thursday evening, 6 o'clock, same as this, right here. And I'm going to do a better job advertising, even if I have to hand paint the signs myself. Put them out on the stand. <laughs> it wasn't posted on the website, you know. At least I couldn't get it. 
Oh, I believe it was, but I'll, I'll check on that too. It wasn't in the paper. It wasn't in the paper. It was. Oh, it was. Okay. Well, like I said. Uh, uh, no, it's in the water bill. Everybody gets water bills. Yeah, it was in the water bills. Did you get your water bill? <laughs> this was in there. Not everybody gets water bills. Oh, not everybody does. Okay. okay. Well, and the people that live just outside of the city, and I always tell people, it's not about the border that you live on or don't live on. We're all South Kitsap, and we're we, we all in this together. Whether you're in the city or just outside of the city, I still want to hear from you. So, yeah. And if you want to loan us a little money, you can too. If you know, we don't get to tax you, it'd be all right if you send it. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, you're paying enough, aren't you? Well, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. And remember, I said if you don't eat the cookies last time or drink the juice, you'll get it again. I think there's still a package of cookies.